restoration. We're helping people to take this journey uh, to belong, believe, and become all they were meant to be in Christ Jesus. Amen. And we do that in four ways. Restoration, you know how we do that? Helping people know God, find freedom, discover their purpose, and make a difference. Uh, we've been talking about uh, this subject of great house. Everybody say great house. Great house. Say that again, great house. great house. We've been talking about this subject of great house, and we're still on this subject of great house. As a matter of fact, we're on week five. We're on week five of uh, talking about this subject of great house. And we're talking about, uh, uh, we, we've been on this characteristic of God's house, and that's what the great house is. Uh, and that's whose the great house belongs to. It belongs to God. Say it's God's house. God's house. So this great house that we've been talking about, it is God's house. And uh, one of the characteristics we said of God's house is it's a house of worship. It's a house of worship. Say a house of worship. And so we, we said that it's, it's a house of faith, it's a family of faith, but it's also a house of worship. It's a house of worship. And so let's read this, this scripture together uh, as we get into our message today, 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 1 through 11. Uh, and we're going to be reading out of the Christian Standard Bible, the Christian Standard Bible translation, 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 1 through 11. I know we had a lot to cover today, so I got to rush. I, I got to run. And so if I don't finish everything, uh, we still got next Sunday, right? Amen. So we'll be good. Uh, everybody say, it's all good. It's all, good. all right. Uh, verse 1 through 11, and then we're going to skip down to, to uh, verse 29. Uh, and that's quite a bit of reading, but I want you to listen while I read aloud in your hearing. When the king had settled into his palace, and the Lord had given him rest on every side from all his enemies. The king said to the prophet Nathan, look, everybody say, look. look. He said, look, I am living in a cedar house while the ark of God sits inside a tent. So Nathan told the king, go king and do all that is on your mind for the Lord thy God is what? The Lord thy God is what? He is with you. Then verse four says, but that night the Lord, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, the prophet, go to my servant, David, and say, this is what the Lord says. Are you to build me a house to dwell in? <laughs> From the time I brought the Israelites out of Egypt until, until today, I have not dwelt in a house. Instead, God says, I have been moving around with a tent as my dwelling. Verse 7, in all my journeys with all the Israelites, have I ever spoken a word to one of the tribes of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel asking, why haven't you built me a house of cedar? Verse 8, so now this is what you are to say to my servant David. This is what the Lord of the armies says to you. I took you from the pasture, from tending the flock, to be ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have destroyed all of your enemies before you. I, somebody say God. This is God talking here. He says, I will make a great name for you like that of the greatest on the earth. I will designate a place for my people Israel and plant them. Somebody say God's going to do it so that they may live there and not be disturbed again. Evildoers will come, will, will not continue to oppress them as they have done. Ever since the day I ordered judges to be over my people Israel, I say God, God says, I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord declares to you, the Lord himself will make a house for you. Hallelujah. Now let's skip down to verse, verse 29. I told you I feel preaching in my bones. Verse 29 says, now please bless your servant's house. This is David talking. He's, he's saying this prayer to God after he's heard all these wonderful, amazing words of promise that God has just spoken to him through the prophet Nathan. He says, now bless your servant's house 
so that it will continue before you forever. How long? Forever. How long? Forever. Come on, shout forever. forever. For you, Lord God, have spoken. And with your blessing, your servant's house will be blessed forever. I want, I want, I want you to hear this in the Message Bible translation, uh, verse 28 and 29. And now, Master God, being the God that you are, speaking sure words as you do, and having just said this wonderful thing to me, please, just one more thing, bless my family. Somebody say, bless my family. Bless my family. Keep your eye on them always. You're already as much as said, you've already as much as said that you would, Master God. Yeah. Oh, may your blessing be on my family. How long? Permanently. Permanently. May God have a blessing to the reading of the word. You may be seated. Thank you, Father, for anointing your servant's lips. I give you praise and glory forever. I want you to write down as, as just, just a title for the next several minutes. We're going we're gonna to talk on the house of blessing. The house of blessing. God's house is a house of blessing. It's a house of blessing. Last Sunday, we said it was a house of provision. We've been, we've, been, we've been talking about being a part of this great family of God, this great house of God, the kingdom of God. We say it's a house of faith. It's a kingdom of faith. It's a house of, of worship. Uh, and so we know that if it's a house of worship, last week we said it's, then that means it's a house of provision. Somebody say it's a house of provision. God has provision in his house for you. And so there, there are multiple people in this room. Even if there was a thousand people in this room, every individual Tangi could take that word personal. I love my God. When I say, oh, Craig got it way back there. I'm high-fiving you from way up here, Craig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't care how many people were up under the sound of my voice. When I say that God has provision in his house for you, every individual can take that word personally. Somebody say, that's my word. Say, there's provision in this house for me. And so it's a house of provision. It's a house of provision. And, and here King David was living in a great house already himself, the Bible says. And King David had the audacity of heart. And he thinks to himself, here I live in this great house of cedar. While God is out there dwelling in a tent. Watch this. David's desire turned away from himself to now what he could do to honor God. Somebody said that's worship all day long. It's when your heart turns away from yourself and it turns uh, vertically in direction to now what can I do to honor and acknowledge God? Yes. That's why the Bible says God seeketh such to worship him. Those that worship him in spirit and in truth. David's heart now is to build God a house. He voices this desire to the prophet Nathan, and Nathan says to him, go, king, and do all that is in your heart to do. For the Lord, watch this, I love this phrase. See, we'll skip right over this phrase, but this is one of the most important phrases. For the Lord thy God is with you. That's why you can go do whatever is in your heart to do. When you know God is with you. Somebody said, when I know God is with me, I can accomplish anything. Yeah, you ought to just give him, give him a hand clap right there. You can accomplish anything. You can accomplish. Now, y'all pity patty. Y'all don't play with me today. Y'all don't play with me today. I ain't in that kind of mode. Come on. Come on. You can do anything. I said you can do anything. I said you can do anything. This church will grow. When you get it in your heart, you can do anything. When God is with us, there is nothing we can't do. Hallelujah. That's your attitude. That's got to be your attitude. It's called a growth mindset. It's not a fixed mindset. It's a growth mindset. It's not, oh, well, I'm stuck here. No, no, you're not. If God is with you, you're not stuck anywhere. Hallelujah. And so... David says, I'm committing myself to do something for the Lord. And what we see here is David is committing himself to an act. Write that down, an act of worship. 
He's committing himself to an act of worship because worship is not necessarily what you do with your feet and your hands and your mouth. But we said last week, worship is an attitude of the heart. Worship is a sacrifice of the heart. Say it's a sacrifice of the heart. That's what that was when Nicole gave that, gave that bonus. It, it was a sacrifice because there's many things she could have did with that bonus. There's many. Baby need diapers. Baby need shoes. Husband, you know, she won't do, you know, some little things, you know, for, for Marcus. Some little, you know, you heard her. She said that there's some boots in the mall for her. <laughs> she got the boots. She got the boots. You, you saw her up here with them on. I love God. She didn't have to go without the boots, did she? <laughs> she didn't have to go without the boots. See, if you give God what, what belongs to him, he says, I'll give you the desires of your heart. Where is that at, Pastor Matthew 6.33? Seek ye first the kingdom of God, what he desires, what he wants. He says, and I'll add all these things that you desire to you. Hallelujah. And so David, he began to worship God. Pastor, I didn't see why he was worshiping God. He was sitting there in his house, and as he was looking out there on that tent, he went into worship because of the intention of his heart. Worship always reveals the intention of your heart. Lord, have mercy. I said worship always reveals the intention of your heart. Hard. David began to set his affection on the Lord. As he was peering out that window at that tent, he was setting his affection on God. Here I am living in this big old beautiful palace. He said, but while my God lives in a tent. He set his affection on God. He set his heart to honor God, to kabod God, to glorify him, which means to acknowledge him. And acknowledge the greatness thereof. He, he's too great to be in a tent. That's what David was saying. I know I'm the king, but why am I in a palace and he in the tent? Because I'm a king, but he is the, watch this, king of kings. He, David, the king, great himself, was acknowledging greatness. That's what worship is, acknowledging that there is always someone out there greater than you. Somebody said, there's, there's someone out there greater than me. And it ain't just anyone, it is the one, glory to God. I said the one. He's the one we lift our hands to, you all. Do you not know that? He's the one that we open up our mouths and sing our praises to. He's the one that we gather here in this, in this assembly to worship around. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. So David, David wasn't, he wasn't worshiping with his hands, with his mouth, with his feet. He was worshiping with his heart. Listen, David hadn't even performed an action yet. He was just sitting there having a conversation in his heart. He hadn't even tithed yet. He hadn't even given an offering yet. He's just, he's just anticipating something in his heart, Barbara. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. This is good to me. I don't know about y'all. He, he, was, he, he, he was meditating, watch this, on the intentions of his heart. He was worshiping. Say he was worshiping. David says, I'm going to build God a house. In other words, I'm going to honor God. David simply, he was expressing an intention of his heart. And this is what worship does. It releases the intentions of the heart. And when God saw, somebody say saw. No, no, no. You got to get that down in your heart. What happened here? When God saw, say God saw. God saw. When God saw, good Lord, David's intentions. See, God can see your intentions. Man can't see what you intend to do in your heart, but God can see intentions. Somebody say your intentions can be seen. I might not be able to see them, Barbara, but God can see your intentions. Ah, that's why the Bible says man looks on, y'all help me preach this, the outer appearance, but God looks at the intentions of the heart. Worship is about your intentions. Worship, worship ain't even about what comes out of your mouth. We worship you and we give you praise. That, that, that's, that's, that's singing. But if it's not the intent of your heart, it's not worship. Somebody help me out in here. I said it's not worship. It's not worship, you all. And so God always looking at your heart. He's looking at your heart because he knows that your mouth can be saying one thing, but your heart is in a whole other place. 
That's why God looks at the intent of man's heart. And so God, he saw David's intentions and God lost it. God went bananas when he saw David's intent and he started throwing around promises and blessings and he, he just starts throwing them around lavishly. And he told Nathan, he said, I can't take it no more. I, I can't take it because of this man's heart. He says, go tell him I'm going to do this for him. I'm going to go do this for him and tell him I'm not just going to do it for him. I'm going to do it for his children and for his children's children. I'm going to do it for the whole nation of Israel. And he says, and I'm not just going to do it tomorrow. Oh, y'all help me preach. I'm not just going to do it next week. But he says, I'm going to do it for. I'm going to do it forever. I'm going to do it forever. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's an intention of your heart when you releases it. God says, I'm going to release you a blessing that you can't get rid of. Lord, y'all missed your opportunity to shout on that. God's going to release you a blessing that's going to last forever. I said it's going to last forever. It ain't going nowhere. You ain't going to be able to wish it away. You're not going to be able to hope it away. Your enemy not going to be able to, to do something to destroy it. He says forever. A forever blessing. Stuff that's on your great-great-grandchildren even when you're dead and gone. Y'all better give God some worship over that. I said... I said that blessings and favor that your great, 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 great grandchildren don't even know your name no more. Get to walk under those. They get to walk under those blessings. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. God sent Nathan back with some amazing promises. Because of the intentions that he saw on David's heart, some amazing promises of blessing. God, God goes into this long litany of promises of what he was going to do for David and his family. Hallelujah. He says, he says, when it comes time for you to rest with your fathers, David, he says, I'm going to raise up one after you. I'm going to raise up your descendant who's going to come from your body and he's going to establish your kingdom. He, he is going to be the one who's going to build me a house. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I will establish his throne of his kingdom forever. He says, I will be his father and he's gonna be my son and when he does wrong he says I'm not he says I'm not gonna discipline him because I might kill him if I discipline him he says I'm gonna discipline him by the stripes of men because God's a merciful God somebody said God's full of mercy mercy you walking under right now from your grandmother's prayers God told me to tell somebody that Mercy, stuff you're not getting that you deserve right now. That's what mercy is, is when you don't get what you do deserve. Stuff you're not getting right now is because of somebody's prayers. They prayed for you many years ago. Before you were even born, they prayed for you. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody had to pray for Nicole. That's why she got the blessing on her life like she does. Because of somebody was praying for her. Before probably she was even born, glory to God. He says, your house and kingdom will endure before me forever. And your throne, David, will be established forever. Somebody say, it's a house of blessing. God's house is not just a house of provision, but where there is worship, where, is a, where you see a house of worship, there's also a house of blessing. There's provision, but the other component of that is that God's blessing rests there. Say God's blessing rests where there's a house of worship. Yes, oh, how sweet and pleasant it is. The Bible speaks to this all throughout the word of God. Psalms 133, oh, how sweet and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in my house in unity. For it is there I will command the what? Blessing. The commanded blessing is on a house of worship. The commanded blessing, I don't care how big or small it is. If, if it's a house of worship, y'all miss that. I said, I don't care how big or small it is. If it's a house of worship, the blessing is there. That means no matter how much the devil tries to take it down, the bless if the blessing of God is there, there's nothing the devil can do against it. I told you all about this, this uh, uh, gentleman who used to stand out. I, I, I think I shared this one time with you all about this gentleman who used to stand outside of our church. 
uh, in Arkansas, our campus there. And for years, on, I mean, he was on his post daily. He would just stand over there with his arms folded, looking over at the church. And uh, he, I, I mean, he would be there probably uh, from the time I got to, to my office to the time I left during the day. I think the only time he wasn't there is on Sundays because he couldn't stick around because the glory was so was so strong. Yeah, but he was just, and, and, and the Holy Spirit told me what he was doing. So he was speaking curses against our church. He was trying to curse what God was doing. And, and the more he prayed, the stronger we got. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Don't you tuck tail and run just because stuff gets hard for you. Because somebody, I don't care if somebody is praying against you, the more they pray against you, if God is with you, I said, if God is with, Lord, who am I preaching to in here? If God is with you, the more they pray against you, the stronger you're going to get. Stronger you're going to get. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. All throughout the Old Testament, we see God blessing the patriarchs of old. The Bible says Noah walked with God and God established his covenant with Noah and his family. Abraham worshiped God with a tithe when he gave a tithe of all to Melchizedek after God went with Abram uh, as he went to rescue his nephew Lot against the enemy armies. And God gave Abram victory over those armies. And here comes King Melchizedek and Abram. He gave King Melchizedek, the Bible says, who had no origin and he had, and, and he had no ending. That is a type and shadow of Jesus Christ. It's a type and shadow of God in the Old Testament showing up in the form of a man. And here it is, Abram tithing to God and didn't even know it. He gave a tenth of all to King Melchizedek. Abram, he not only worshiped in the tithe, but he also worshiped in the offering. God told him to give him his best. Give me your first fruit. Give me Isaac. Give me your best. He took Isaac up on the mountain, and God had to yell from heaven to keep him from killing Isaac because Abraham was a worshiper. Somebody say Abraham was a worshiper. He was a worshiper. He was a worshiper. And, and the Bible says, and God blessed him. Watch this. And his family. And God says to Abram, Abraham's seed. He says, if you, Abraham's seed, is faithful like Father Abraham, he says, I'm going to bless you too. Somebody said, I believe I'm that seed. Yeah, yeah, the reason you are that seed, if you are that seed, is because you got the spirit of Christ Jesus living on the inside of you. Because Christ Jesus is the seed of Abraham. And if you got Christ Jesus, Galatians chapter 3 says, go and, go and read it later, but Galatians chapter 3 says that, that if you, if Christ Jesus lives in you, then you are the seed of Abraham and heirs according to the promise. We see Israel had the blessing on them, even in the wilderness, wherever they went, their enemies feared them. <laughs> Balaam, the son of Baor, the seer, yes, yes. told Balak, king of, king of Moab, in response to King Balak, he was, he was trying to get Balaam to curse Israel. Because Israel, he was afraid of Israel. Because when he looked down upon Israel, they looked so massive in numbers. And he, so he called for the seer and he said, I want you to curse Israel. <laughs> and every time Balaam went to curse Israel, God said, hey, I bless them. And so he went back and, and King, King Balak, he was mad at Balaam. He says, didn't I hire you to curse them? Why didn't you curse them? He says, uh, Balaam said, I tell you what, let's build another altar over here and let's see what God says. And so they built another alt altar over here. And when they built that altar, God, God tapped them on the shoulder again. He says, they blessed. And then now, by this time, Balak, he's exasperated. He's really upset. He says, what is it going to take to get you to curse these people? He says, I tell you what, build one more altar. Let me see what the Lord says. And then when he built that third altar, God tapped him on the shoulder again. He says, they're blessed. And, what, and this time he says, and what God has blessed. Y'all better shout over that. And what God has blessed. Shout with me, no man. No man can curse. I don't care what witch, warlock, sorcerer, person who's working darkness against you. They cannot prosper what they're trying to do against you if God says you're blessed. 
Somebody say, I'm blessed. Say it, say it four more times. I'm blessed. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. You can't curse what God has blessed. I said, you can't curse what God has blessed. I said, you can't curse what God has blessed. Because Abraham worshiped God and the blessing that rested on Abraham and his seed. Hallelujah. That meant that now Isaac was blessed and, and Jacob was blessed. And, and, and whoever came after Isaac and Jacob, all the way down to Mary, mother of Jesus. And, <laughs> oh, Lord. And Elizabeth says, look, look at the greeting that Elizabeth greeted her cousin when she showed up at the house. She says, woman, esteemed and blessed of God. Hallelujah. She was saying she was calling her blessed because Abraham was a worshiper. Her great, 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 grandfather was blessed. And when the blessing sits on the family, who am I talking to? I said, when the blessing sits on the family, oh, that family is unstoppable. I said when the blessing says, it don't mean bad stuff will not happen or try to come against the family. It don't mean that the devil won't try to get in your marriage. It don't mean that the devil won't try to get in your children. But when the fa when there's a blessing on the family, Lord, that's what I decree is over my family. There's a blessing on the Howard household. You got to get your hands up and say the same thing, especially if you're a man. You better say there's a blessing over my house. There's a blessing over my marriage. There's a blessing over my finances. There's a blessing over my business if you're an entrepreneur. If you lead a team of people at work, I dare you to say, it's a blessing over my team. It's a blessing over them. God will bless people because you bless. Good Lord have mercy. I said, God will bless somebody because you show up. Because you had the audacity to get hired by that company. Now the company bless. So when they don't hire you, it's their loss. Because they just missed out on the blessing. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Shout I got access. Shout I got access. That's what the Lord told me to declare to you. You got access to excess. Y'all missed it. This is, it's going to get in you. It's going to get in you. It's going to get in you. Come on, just let that just let marinate a little bit. Marinate a little bit. You got access to excess. The earth is the Lord's. The excess thereof belongs to him. You got access to God's excess. Hallelujah. That's why I refuse to think small, Shaniqua. I won't let nobody make Dexter small. This room won't make me small. This church won't make me small. I was big when I got here. I don't need nobody to make me big. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, I got access to God's best. Yeah, you got access to God's best. So why wouldn't you give him your best? If you got access to God's best, there got to be more where that come from. Ah, that's why David was obsessed with the house of God. He was obsessed with building God a house. Hallelujah. The Bible says, in so oh, I can't get away from scripture. So much power in the word of God. Psalms 25, verse 12 to 13 says, if you see a man who fears the Lord, his seed shall be mighty in the earth. Because you are serving the Lord, your children shall inherit the earth. Somebody better jump your hand up and receive that for your children. You better jump your hand up and receive that for your children. I declare my children are going to inherit the earth. And I ain't talking about no dirt either. No, I'm talking about favor and, hey, money and God's best. Houses and lands and... Hallelujah. Jobs. Glory to God. My children are going to inherit God's best. Say my worship gives me access. 
Hannah, Hannah, she, Hannah, she was barren, but her worship gave her access. She fell out like a drunk woman in the spirit of worship. And the man of God thought she had been drinking. And she said, oh, no, man of God, I'm just desperation of soul. In other words, she was saying, I'm laying myself out before God because God is the only one who got what I need. See, that's what worship says. God, you are the only one who has what I need. That's why when me and my wife bring our first fruit next Sunday, I'm going I'm to release it gladly and with joy. Hallelujah. You know why? Because God is the only one who has what I need. That's what my worship says. God, you're the only one. You're the only one who got what this Dexter needs, what this little boy from England, Arkansas needs. I'm just a little country boy. Oh, Lord, everything I need, you got. When I came here, I didn't have a house. When I left Arkansas, I gave up a house. I gave up a beautiful home, two acres of land, 4,500 square foot home. I gave up masses of stuff to come here. But I believe the word of God says, which I'm absolutely persuaded about. I said I'm absolutely persuaded about it. And you need to get absolutely persuaded about the promises of God. And the promise of God says for Dexter and Jeanette, it says no man has left houses or lands, mothers or fathers, sisters or brothers, that I won't give them in this lifetime, mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers, houses and land, 100-fold. And in the life to come, eternal life. Hallelujah. That's my promise. Somebody said, that's my promise. The boy had to do good when he got here because I left too much. And God said, uh-oh, uh-oh, you done, you done gave up too much. I got to show you, you can't outgive me. You will never be able, Marcus and Nicole, you will never be able to outgive God. I'm telling everybody in this room, get rid of your small thinking. You can't outgive God.